spirit um, permeate the team, which is that, hey, like our job is to get more small businesses to survive. That's yeah. the only thing that matters right now. You've got, I think you're powering a million um, e-commerce sites all around the world. Um, tell me a little bit about what, what trends you've been seeing. I mean, have you seen an increase in the number of people? Like, like 2008 is, is an important point because you thought in 2008, 2009, when Shopify was just eight people that you were finished, that that financial crisis was going to wipe you out. But the exact opposite happened. People started to sign up for Shopify. People were losing their jobs. Said, all right, well, I might as well pursue this idea that I had, and and I can do an e-commerce site. It's cheaper than, than than you know getting a lease in a store. Are you seeing a similar kind of trend now, or is this different? Yeah, we, we, no, we are seeing a similar trend. It's um, I mean, look, when this when especially when shelter in place started, I mean, the thing that happened uh, is um, at this point we don't just power people's online stores anymore. We have a, a fairly large point of sale business as well. And of course, all that went away, like the, the, no one could get to the stores. In fact, I think a lot of um, tra a lot of more traditional businesses, especially, have just figured out that um, their stores have the only connectivity into the global world of commerce. And, and, it, and, and that felt very stable, but suddenly it wasn't. Yeah. And, um, so one, what 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 we, what we have seen is um, basically an acceleration forward of almost all all trends. You know, we we've now um, companies that never imagined that they might sell directly over the internet mm -hmm. have now come to us to do exactly that. Um, we have had Heinz Ketchup go online, which is wow. a hundred fifty one year old company um, that I don't think ever expected to go direct to consumer. <laughs> um, uh, in the way maybe Allbirds does, but uh, but right. everyone's in, everyone's facing the same problems. And you know, in seven days, they stood up a, a site, and now you can buy ketchup online. And it's wow. it's 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 um, we're, we're seeing a lot of this. Uh, we're seeing a lot of adaptability where maybe previously it might just not have existed in the same way. And I I, yeah. I, I think that's hopeful. Toby, before we get to questions, um, I'm curious. I mean, you. Um, you said something in our interview on the podcast, which if you're watching this, go back and listen to that episode from August of 2019. It's so good. And you said something, um, and I'm going to kind of mess up your quote here, but it's something like, as an entrepreneur, you always live in two states of mind. You said one is, one state of mind is if we do this, we'll be unbeatable and we're going to, we're doing great. It's all working out. And then the other state of mind is um, complete dread. We're dead. Are you, do you still experience those two thoughts right now? I totally, I, I, it, it's, it's amazing how, and I think I might've even said this. I, I think the thing that changes as the company gets bigger is that, um, the oscillation between those two things just keeps getting faster. And it's it, like, I, I, I have. Like I have a pretty incredible job now and I, I see a good chunk of, um, the world of uh, small businesses specifically and, and in just the world of commerce. And um, it's, I, I, I often go from when I'm talking with our customers, even even then, like it just, it's, in some cases, it's these incredible people who are setting up for completely new journeys and kind of excited about this. On, on the other side, it's, it, there is a lot of, I, I mean, this is a real challenge. There's some yeah. serious hardship out there. Um, and uh, everyone, is challenged in a way that I don't think anyone, like, like no one would sign up for. It's this like, hey, everything I knew is now invalidated. I have to rederive every single idea I have about my business, every single idea I have about being able to meet payroll or who I'm working with or in which way I'm showing up or what my brand actually stands for. And um, it's, 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 it's a crazy situation. Um, but this this keeps going, and even 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 when you, when a company is at the point that Shopify is at, like I, I I often go through these mental states back and forth in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in the same day. It's uh, it, you sort of get used to it, but not really. Which is what I love about you, because you are the head of a 
the CEO of a 5,000 person company and it's doing very well. And I love that you still have self doubt and, and that you talk about it. And I think that's super important and healthy for uh, leaders just to see um, and to experience and to do. What, what do you think, Toby? I mean, if you were an, an if you had an idea, right? Um, or, you know, you wanted to, if you kind of wanted to launch something for a while. I mean, is now a good time to do it? I guess it's hard, it's hard question to answer, but it, are there opportunities now given what's going on around the world? So I, I, I think a, it is a surprising number of the best companies in the world have been launched in, at the depths of recessions. I, I, I think this is a, like a story I keep coming. I'm not particularly looking for it and not asking. It's just often people just bring it up. It's like, hey, when I started this thing, it was exactly the time everyone said this is a terrible time to do it um i like i i think well look so the way we, we are talking about this internally is um we are, from from what we are seeing in our retail space and this might be true in other spaces too but i can't talk with authority about it uh, from what we are seeing um 2030 basically got pulled to 2020 forward on all trends that relate to digitalization um, again, all these businesses that only were retail just disappeared. There, there, there's a vacuum that they left behind, which they are scrambling to, to fill in. Um, the businesses that were more digitally native, um, the business that had retail, but also um, were online and on the different channels like Instagram or Pinterest, they have replaced up over 90% of their lost sales um from from retail and and so it's not really that at least so far when we are recording this it's not that people have stopped spending money Pe people are like the mix of how people spend their money has changed it's a lot more online it's a lot more on the kinds of products that you need around the house and um so that is a backdrop against which amazing entrepreneurial stories can be written um, because there is just like opportunity, especially on the recovery side, whenever that ends up uh, happening, um, where people can just have uh, bring bring new options on the market. And I think that's a lot. A lot of people now have a new understanding of what the world's probably going to be like uh, when when we get back. I don't think we're going to go back to the world we had. We're going to forward into something different. Um, in some cases, uh, ways it's going to be better, and maybe in some cases it's going to be worse. Uh, both those categories have a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurship. Toby, stand by. My team is telling me remotely, so and please forgive me if you're watching this because there's no cameraman, there's no lighting. It's just me here sitting here, and there's Toby sitting there in Ottawa. Um, but my team is telling me on Slack that my audio is coming in. Now. I'm going to pop off for a sec. Toby, you don't have to be by yourself there. Don't worry. You don't have to hold the board. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to rejoin in a sec, so just stand by. Five seconds, ten seconds, I'll be back. I'm good. Thank you. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Apparently, my audio is now better. So, um, so yeah, I mean, Toby, th this is the thing. Like, I, I also I've been looking at companies that have started at difficult times. I mean, Slack, Uber, mm -hmm. Venmo. I mean, all these brands that we used. There's actually an amazing um, supermarket chain in the United States called Publix, which is one of the biggest in the South. It was started in 1930. Um, at the you know at the beginning of the Great Depression, and struggled for like ten years, and today it employs two hundred thousand people and is an enormous company, employee owned. So there's there are really amazing stories out there. Um, and anyway, I just I I think that's an important point to make as as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, it's a scary time, right? But to your point, I mean, there are still reasons to um to kind of get in there, right, and put your hat in the ring. And, and and you need to be extremely comfortable um, uh, as an entrepreneur uh, 
like sort of charging into the unknown because that's literally what you're committing yourself to. Um, yeah. The, during a recession, it's there, there is an advantage that it's not just you doing it; it's everyone has to do it. <laughs> so, in 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 a way, it's actually draws it, it's more equal environment um, uh, than that. I also think that the the formative years of companies end up mattering a lot more than I think anyone's willing to uh, admit. Um, and I, I like I, I can absolutely see a supermarket chain founded it, uh, right at the dawn of a Great Depression, having a more sustainable attitude towards expenses and uh, for, for for the entire life history. Um, there are some you, you will pick up skills based on your experiences during your formative years. And uh, I think uh, I, I can see how that's helpful. Um, Toby, I want to get to some questions. We've got a lot of questions coming in from Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Um, so, all right, here's a question from, um, from Colette Wu. She asks, how does Shopify prove to their customers that their, their service re can really work out for them and make their business, you know, kind of launch off from, from your platform? What are, what are ways that Shopify can actually do that? I, I, I don't think there's one specific answer. It's 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 a trust relationship, right? That we're trying to build with people. Like we, we think about trust in the form of a battery, which uh, we, we we are trying to charge through solving real problems. Um, what all of Shopify works on, every person's committed to this, is 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 trying to help the entrepreneurs on the platform to be uh, more successful, ideally, than they might have imagined um, uh, themselves to be. Um, and 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 give people the skills that they might not even maybe they didn't think they needed maybe they didn't think they uh, um, uh, w would be part of that journey but like ideally we want to make everything as simple as possible so that the the people who use Shopify can focus um, everything on trying to create the best products and find the find the right market and I think over these interactions over time. Hopefully, people end up trusting Shopify, and then Shopify then says, "Hey, here's a new idea for you, or maybe a new channel you might want to expand in." Um, then uh, that's something people do, and 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 over this, like interactions, um, trust is built. Toby, what kind? I mean, what are some kind of like types of stores you've seen people launch in recent weeks? I mean, any any examples that stick out? One of the most amazing things is like right up at the earliest time, um, uh, to, like when shelter in place happened and, uh, like even, even right before we saw, uh, new businesses and, and, and some existing businesses pivot to, towards mask making, um, which is of course becoming much more important. Uh, we, we all know that there's a significant shortage in PPE and, um, some people retooled their sneaker factories to create, uh, masks and, and, and a lot of people, uh, drove efforts from home. That's that's one of the things we saw. The other thing is there's just been an enormous community effort um, of bringing sort of a favorite local businesses online so that they can mm -hmm. do um, uh, curbside pickup or even uh, people get together to have someone do deliveries in, in the neighborhood. And um, what, what's, what's been remarkable is that, that we've seen some of these businesses actually do better than they've ever done before which is hmm. so, like, it, it's not the rule, but like the stories have been around from the beginning where people were surprised about how well this works and are becoming more and more frequent. And we, we, we hear this in our calls of our customers and uh, like just sort of local, even, even local newspaper stories, which, are, which, which is really, really yeah. awesome. What if, what if you're like, you were planning on launching, we've, we've had a version of this question before, but I think it's most apropos to you, what if you were planning on launching a product or service, right, before the pandemic happened? Um, and here you are out in the world, you've got a Shopify storefront, and you're trying to generate interest, but you can't be out in the world. Um, what, are, what are ways that people are able to market and to, um, you know, to, to spread the word about what, what it is that they're offering right now? Yeah. I mean, how do you do that right now? I, I, th I think, it's a better time than ever to 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 do this through specifically social media. There's a lot more attention there, especially. I, I mean, it depends a lot on your product, of course. But um, I mean, we we found the most sort of random subcategories of products and ending up doing extremely well. Um, one, one of my favorite examples of this is um, uh, we we have a subcategory of products called uh, de decorative tapestries, 
which I never would have imagined being some, but what, once you realize, hey, that's sort of a real world Zoom background kind of accessory, then, then you realize why people are now buying uh, decorative tapestries and wall art and um, all these kind of products. So like, I, I think what you have to ask yourself is like, um, this product I'm creating, how does how does this fit into the story of a times? I, I mean, this is always a question you should ask yourself when doing marketing. Mm -hmm. But I think um, now, especially if if you can if you, if you can tell like if either your product fits better in in the future that's emergent um, after this, or fits in well in the times and solves a real problem, that's you will find an incredibly receptive audience to that. Yeah, you know we we had um, Stuart Butterfield on from Slack a couple of days ago and. Um, and Stuart acknowledged that there, there is sort of this kind of weird um, position that he's in, which is Slack is obviously doing very well um, because of the crisis. So many people are, are relying on Slack to communicate. You just mentioned that that your team is as well. You're in a similar position. I mean, most businesses are not doing well now. This is not good for 95, 99% of businesses, but Shopify, of course, has benefited from so many people signing up. Um, how do you how do you feel about that? Is that, I mean, obviously it's good for your company. You're a publicly traded company. You've got a responsibility to a whole you know series of constituents. But I don't know. Is there something a little weird about it too? Yeah, no, it, it, it certainly is. Uh, um, I, I it, it it I don't exactly know how I feel about this either. Um, it's, I, I mean, what, when one thing I can do is. Um, try to share any good fortune coming our way, right? The, the nice thing, like the most wonderful thing about Shopify is that we can actually make a difference, right? I, I um, We will work at Shopify or Slack. Um, we, we all made life choices that meant uh, we didn't wind up being doctors or nurses or frontline workers. So it's very hard for us to uh, join the real heroes of this crisis uh, and, and make a make the difference in the most important realm. But at least via Shopify, we, we, we can make a significant impact on the um, the second wave economic crisis that 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 comes from the humanitarian crisis. Um, we can like because like we really really believe believe that the merchants and the small business and the entrepreneurs are such an important part of the economy like more than like more than 50 percent of people uh in the world work for small businesses like right um and uh so what we try as much as we can is uh launch every everything even if you're uncomfortable about the quality if we have something in the pipeline in the roadmap anywhere that makes a difference right now um uh, then we are trying. We are currently getting this out of the door. We we've been. Um, this has probably been, in terms of launches, the most productive time we've ever had. We've we've launched entire massive new things that we ended up not even talking about, just because it doesn't fit into the times. Like one example of this is uh, we launched uh, like an app um, that uh, allows you to uh, uh, buy carbon offsets for 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 all the packages going around. You can install it. Right. it it'll it'll offset all the. Like to me, that's actually super important because it's, it's a topic I think a lot about. Right this moment, climate change is, for a brief period of time, the second most important topic on the planet. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we are trying, like we're bringing everything forward, like local delivery, um, uh, curbside pickup. All these things are things that we are trying to build better software for. Because here's what happens. Like again, I said this earlier. We, we like we brought 20, 30, 10 years forward. So that also means we all are in 2030 right now with circa 2020 quality software. Um, if wow. you if you go back and try to use quasi 20, 2010 quality software, you remember it to be really good. But if you try it, it's not. It's wow. it's 10 years yeah. out of date. Right. So um, we found ourselves n not like facing problems without software of the quality that we would like to take into the uh, to solve the problems. And we're, we're trying to catch 20, up. It's we're in a 2030 situation with 2020 software, essentially. Um, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about Shopify, obviously from probably from a lot of Shopify customers. Um, and I wanna get into some of them. Um, this is from LJV. Um, uh, he asks about uh, online shopping um, has obviously increased uh, package delivery. Many of those packages are getting delayed. 
Um, is that something that Shopify will want to get involved with? And, and also, do you think now is a good time to get into the trucking business? <laughs> Um, we are, yeah, so we, we will, we will get more involved in this. We, we've announced the Shopify Fulfillment Network. So we are, we're actually building, uh, like infrastructure for, for delivery. It's not going to be, we, we can't accelerate that as fast as we can potentially accelerate the software work we are doing. Um, we actually see there, there are significant delays. Um, it's well publicized that Amazon is, uh, prioritizing essentials. Um, some larger, uh, merchants, struggling with uh, getting packages out of the door quickly, although that's actually getting much, much better uh, now. Um, we see small businesses be really quick. So I think there's actually, hmm. there's really good reasons for why people should shop local and, and, and shop from small uh, businesses right now, because they just don't have the capacity issues. Uh, and that, they're that delivering the it fast, yeah. Have. yeah. Right. Um, this is a question. We're getting a lot of questions and I, I'm just going to throw this out there to give you a chance to respond to this. You've responded the, to this before. You've written about this um, on your blog. I think you know the question I'm going to get. A lot of people are asking, you know, why does Shopify allow sites like Breitbart um, on, you know, to, to sell their products? Um, some people say, you know, they promote racism and so on and so forth. So you've responded to that in the past. What What is your answer to that question? Yeah, so we have a we have a fairly like a really well defined uh, acceptable use policy which we hold everyone uh, to. So, um, like it's it, if you see something that you don't think should uh, be acceptable, please submit it. That helps us a lot. We have a lot of automated systems. We are this is something that we take very very seriously. Um, so please submit uh, uh, sites that you think are ex uh, violating the acceptable use policy. All right. Well, thank you everybody for that question, and I. I know that's a, a an important question for a lot of people. Um, so thank you for that. Um, this is from a uh, a sh uh, Shopify dev um, on Twitter. Shopify dev writes: Do you have any plans to allow Shopify stores to run on local hosts for debugging and or testing? Uh, no current plans, but we want to ship uh, better development tools uh, to to make it as good as being able to do this. Um, Shopify runs on a very, very, very complex server farm with thousands and thousands of machines. And it's like, it's a little bit hard to, to crunch that down to a single machine. We're getting, we're getting, we're going, we're getting some deep cuts here, Toby, from, from Shopify um, folks. Um, here, here's a question that, um, a, a version of a question that I'm getting to. Siobhan Lee asked this question on Facebook and others. Um, I mean, how is this, how is what's happening now going to change the way Shopify works, the way you operate? Um, everything about your culture, ev everything. Ha ha I mean, presumably it's going to change it pretty significantly. Yeah, no, I, I think it will. I, um, I, but I don't, I think a good culture is not defined by keeping it a certain way. In fact, I think the way a lot of companies end up inevitably destroying their own culture is by um, seeing it as a static thing that has to be kept rather than um, uh, wanting to evolve it with the situation that they are in. Like um, it's impossible to have the same culture in a five people company as you have in a 500 people company. Um, but what you can have is a great culture in both. Um, and one of them can evolve into the other, uh, uh, over, like over time. So this is really what it's about. So we have to be adaptable. We will all change. Like again, the, I think the office centricity is, is is going to change. We will have a lot more norms about the way we work together um, and, and work together um, maybe digitally by default. Um, we are seeing, uh, but we are also seeing things which are good, right? Like I think one thing that I've learned uh, personally is that a meeting with people who are remotely is significantly better if everyone is in their own tile instead of if there if some people are in the same room i exactly and 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 so i hadn't i did not know this uh, before going into this totally. i think totally how how often have you been in a, in a in a video meeting where you're, you're looking at a conference table with like nine people around the conference table and it's just not you're, you're so right i never thought about that everyone getting their own tile makes it a better meeting it absolutely does and i, I think then like 
we have a lot of meeting rooms, um, which now, like, I can't tell you the last time I was in a meeting with just local people. Like Shopify is like distributed because we have, we, we always, we, we had more offices as a younger company than I think most companies, especially in Silicon Valley do. So we were always in you know, Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal and Waterloo and, uh, you know, Berlin, Vancouver and San Francisco and so on. And, and, and so I have not been to a meeting with just local people in a long time. And, 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 and so now I'm like, I, I, I think I, I know I know something about what it's like to be with one person on the uh, on a Zoom call and not wanting to interrupt and all the systems be like this. So I think we're like we're learning uh, we're learning about a good way to work together. It's is it as good as the previous one? Probably not. Um, but it has a different set of trade offs. And I think this is on on this idea. This is a new brick in the foundation of the modern company and on top of which we can build great cultures if you want to. Toby, how has this changed you as a leader? I mean, you are, you're still, I mean, you're such a young um, founder. I mean, you start, started this company when you were so young and you oversee 5,000 people and it's a publicly traded company and I mean, it's a big responsibility. I mean, how do you think it's changed the way you operate as a leader and the way you think about what it means to be a leader? Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm learning a lot. I, I, I mean, before this, I used to do a, uh, an AMA, ask me anything about once a quarter with the entire company. And it was sort of an in-person event again. Now it's something I'm doing weekly. Uh, like I, I, I've been hosting every town hall since, because I think just, um, there's so much to do with this. The entire company has incredible clarity of mission right now, again, about what we set out to do. But exactly how we do this is is, is really left to all these parts of a company. We, we, we love to be uh, loosely coupled, um, but loosely coupled only really works when we we, we come together and, and and base our decisions on on, on the same fundamentals. Right? So, so just the, the amount of communication and the ways to communicate have evolved so much. I'll give you one example, like for instance, um, like I, I, I used to love, I, I loved spending time with my product teams. I love getting into deep, detailed, like engineering conversations. Um, uh, this this used to be like, I, I, I just walked into the part of a team that worked on on, on this and, and we did a little workshop and, uh, I, I can't do this anymore. But one thing I do have, I have a really good video setup now. And 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 I think this is something everyone's involved. Like hitting that record button is really cheap. Uh, going through um, a, a flow or a mock-up and just talking about this and then putting this into the, the, the right Slack channel, it's not as good because it's not as fun because there's the it's the interactivity is missing. But right. then I get a video back with a response and suddenly I'm like, hey, this is... It's diminished, but also a lot more efficient. And by the way, I can do this with more groups in this out. And so, so again, I, I I think just keeping an open mind about how to reproduce the situations that 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 that, that you appreciated before in new ways is, is just such an important ingredient in this whole thing. Toby, we've got a comment. Um, I just want to read this comment from from Facebook from uh, Mary Cambruzzi. She's a Shopify user. She writes, "I'm watching from Ann Arbor." After many years um, with mostly under a, a mostly underutilized Shopify site, we quickly pivoted to focus on adding products and promoting the website. She says in the last eight weeks, they've seen a five thousand percent increase in web sales, um, and uh, she she appreciates what uh, Shopify has helped help them do. So I wanted to read that comment um, from wow. from Mary. Um, Toby, before I, I, I let you go, I just want to say hello to some people watching. Devin Kumar in India, Jamila. Bellew, uh, Bellye, Yeu, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Atlanta, MK Langford in Kansas, Litzy Thompson in Denmark, Betsy Suda in Gainesville, Florida, Jody Davis in Lynchburg, Virginia, Lilish Lee New in Toronto, Sonia Paz in California, Trevor Carter in the UK, uh, Taylor Simoneau, uh, Simoneau in South Louisiana, Elsa Jungman or Jungman in San Francisco, and many more. I'm sorry if I mangled your last name or your first name, please forgive me. Um, we have some really cool stuff coming up um, on the show. If you like these conversations, um, by the way, please let other people know about them. They happen every Wednesday and Friday right here, um, 9 Pacific, noon Eastern um, 
This Friday, I'll be talking with Andy Puttycomb and Rich Pearson, the co-founders of Headspace. If you use that app, that's Andy's voice that you hear all the time. Um, next week, every single day at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, I will be speaking to a different person. We're doing a whole week on fashion, the fashion industry and beauty industry. It's been hit really hard. Um, and we're going to hear from some some of the leaders in that industry, Marcia Kilgore of Beauty Pie. Uh, she founded Bliss. Jen Hyman of Rent the Runway will join us. Sarah LaFleur of MM LaFleur, Ali Webb of Drybar, and James Reinhardt of Thread Up. So check that out next week, Fashion Week, all all week on, on How I Built This Resilience Edition. Um, we've got a new episode on the show this week. It's with Pat Brown, the founder of Impossible Foods. Um, like Toby's story, it's an incredible journey um, that he took to basically to fight climate change. That That's why he decided to start that company. It's a really cool episode. Tomorrow on your podcast queue, if you're a subscriber to How I Built This, we've got a bonus episode from th these conversations. You'll hear Sami Nosrat, author of Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat, and Alice Waters with uh, the owner of Chez Panisse and the founder of The Edible Schoolyard with her daughter, Fanny. We did those conversations a few weeks ago, and tomorrow we'll release it on the podcast. If you miss any of these live conversations, you can find them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash How I Built This, or on the NPR YouTube page. That's it. That's a lot of announcements, a lot of information to process, maybe too much. Um, Toby, thank you so much. It's so great um, seeing you this way. I, I know last time we saw each other, I was in San Francisco and um, hope to see you again soon. Congratulations on what, what you've been working on. And um, and I think you're right. I think it's a, I think it's a good moment to, you know, it's not obviously, maybe that's not the right word, but it is, there are opportunities now and if you're thinking about it now, now is, you know, now may be the time to kind of jump into it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing it. It's, I love the show and uh, it's, it's bringing us all closer together and these conversations are invaluable. So thank you so much. Thanks, Toby.